Would you like a pizza pizza? Nice. Extra large. Oh, you're too old. Can we warm up? Cameras are rolling anyway. I think we look all right. How you feeling? I feel all right. <clears throat> feel good. It is one's not too bad. Yeah, it's not Red bad. Red to black. Especially for 12 bucks. Some of them are like really bitter. Yeah. Doctor's orders, man. Yeah. Give it some time. Right? Look at that. The house of Sean. <laughs> you guys know you want to go to that house. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to Bring Me Up, Scotty. I'm Scotty Hoy. You're watching Beamus. Yes. And we're back with... Sean. Yes, special guest. You guys love him so much. <laughs> I'm trying to get him here as yeah, much as I can. Special, yeah. No, I'm trying to do more of these kind of sets for you. I was just telling Sean, I posted a picture of this set when it was like on pre-sale before the launch. And I asked you guys, is it sensible to make something like this or review this? And I mean, kind of noise on not only on my Facebook page, but on the other forums. And everyone's like kind of very split down the middle. Mm. Yes, Scotty, review it. It's a historical thing. Um, a lot of people are like, not, don't do it right now because of everything that's going on in the world. I guess I should put a disclaimer on this, right? Should I? Like, I yo, mean, if you want to... Look, we're not taking sides. Yeah, right. Uh, but, uh, you, know, you know, if you if you don't want to see war or this kind of thing right now in yeah. front of your eyes right now, just turn it's away. Just, yeah, that, that's why... Don't watch this video. There's a back button on a browser. But that's why I brought Sean down here, because he's yeah. the one that's going to be the, the one getting in trouble. Exactly. I mean, yeah, everyone's going to get mad at me, which is fine. I'm used to that. But someone made a point that, hey, man, Scotty, you're doing all military tanks and vehicles already, so... Don't stop there. Yeah. So here you guys go. We're going to look at this massive set. So what you're looking at today is from Pangu. It's called the Barbarossa Project. PG12006. 3,654 pieces. For ages 14 and up. Yes. And it says here on the book, Simulation Scene. Oh, very nice. Simulation Scene. Now, before we get into the set, let me show you the box. I actually do have the box here. Unfortunately, it's like one of those crappy boxes. The colors are so, different. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, I'll talk about that too. You know, <clears throat> I'm surprised Sean even noticed that. Yes, as opposed to a non-simulation scene, which... I can't lift this thing up. Ah! Okay, here's the box for this sucker. My you goodness. There. It's very big. But, oh man, Wait, some of the Wait, is this friends... a new one? Yeah, this is... Oh, okay. I was wondering, like, why is it heavy? But okay. Yeah, it's, an, it's one that we're selling on the store. These okay. are all available on BrickMeUpScotty.com. If you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. If you yeah. want to buy it, it's available. It's up to you, man. Your call. You yeah. guys are choosing this. Exactly. But anyway, the box is all messed up, man. Yeah. It's one of those, a lot of brands do this kind of style. Like, they just get jacked up. So anyway, yeah. there you go. Very plain. They don't really say any information. They don't even say, like, what kind of vehicles they're using and all that kind of stuff. It's just like Barbarossa. That's product. my job. That's yeah. why I have Sean here. If you look on the back here. Wait, what does it say? Start to act. Act now. Special sneak previews on the bottom of the box. Yes, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, or if it's out of focus, but the, this, the, the one that you, Sean is pointing at, yes. looking at everything mirrored. The one he's pointing at is available. Yes. I haven't built it yet, Okay. but I will because I... Let me just explain it really quickly. I'm not a military fan if you guys follow my channel, but I actually do love building like all the tanks and have, having Sean down here is so much fun. Yeah. But as soon as I saw this, I'm like, yo, diorama, it's a scene. Yeah. It looks amazing. And so I will build this one. You guys want me to build that one? Should I do it? This Sean, one? yes or no? The, the one on the bottom? This one, yeah, well, this one's here. The, that one's Battle of Berlin, yes. No, that, that, that one's not out yet. This is the right. Moscow defense one. Oh, oh, Moscow defense, yes, okay. Normandy Moscow and Normandy, and this one is the Berlin one. The right. middle one is Normandy. Okay, yes. Those are not out yet. Okay, yeah. But if you guys like this video... Moscow defense. What's odd, because I was saying to him earlier, because he asked me, and we'll talk about it, the, the Germans never actually got to Moscow other than with artillery. They were within artillery range, and then the winter came down. Very bad winter and stop them. So this wouldn't necessarily be correct. But like you said, the idea of the diorama. Um, it looks amazing. The reason I know all this arcane, useless, detailed stuff about all these military tank things is when I was a kid in the 1970s, Jesus, I used to do a lot of 135th scale, like Tamiya uh, tank models and stuff. And yes, the whole fun was to build a diorama so that you could create essentially this, but you'd have to build everything. Before we dive into the set, here's the manual. Yes. Same deal as the box. Same back as well. Yeah. Sean and I were laughing at the description. Yes. Exquisite. Exquisite. Display. Mm -hmm. this, 
nothing really exquisite on the details, but anyway, if I just open a page for you guys. It's nice. Very easy to follow. Yeah. And one thing to note is that Pangu is also known as Happy Build. Yeah. You know, we're the authorized distributor for Pangu Very and nice. Happy Build. And we actually did review a Pangu before, but we haven't released it because... Oh, that one. The Gatling gun. Oh, had, that one. <clears throat> yeah, because Chris dropped the gun. Damn me, Chris. And it's in pieces, and I haven't had time to Damn it. repair it. And So that was a fun video. So yeah. hopefully we'll get that going soon. Eventually. So before I dive into my overall feelings of this build, you know, I went into this thing blind. I had no idea what it's looking at. Sean will give us a little background of yeah. what is going on. What is Barbarossa? Yeah, exactly. Okay, isn't today June 22nd? Oh, yes, yeah. It is. It is. We made sure of that because Operation Barbarossa, 1941, June 22nd, longest day of the year, was the day that Hitler, in his typical overarching optimism, I believe there was meth involved, but never mind that. He believed he could defeat the Soviet Union and take over Russia at least well into the Caucasus to get the oil and the, the wheat in the Ukraine. And so he sent 10 million Germans into the Soviet Union with an eye towards uh, vanquishing it. As we all know, historically it didn't turn out, but at least until I would say October, November, things were going very well for the Nazis and they, they managed great uh, gains pushed into Russia, obviously wreaking much havoc and destruction, uh, which we see reflected here. Um, one thing I was discussing with Scott that's kind of fascinating is that all of the, the three major uh, vehicles here are period correct, um, which isn't necessarily important. It's just really interesting and nice that that's what happened. It's like us telling Sean, it's like someone knew what they're doing when they're designing the set. It's great that you get a full scene and you get these three vehicles. Yeah. Now, I personally had a great time putting this together. I had like zero issues. Sean did mention like if you look at the box or if I get the, the book here again, thing you can see on that camera, color is a little bit off. It's like the rendering is like really bright and yeah. colorful, but it, the roofing is like dark and the building is a little bit or darker. Or even like where, the, where the, there's the graffiti on the tank, the Russian tank, that yeah, yeah, yeah. panel that's is a different color. Yeah, that's right, because it has a sticker. So the set does have stickers, but it's very minimal on stickers. Yeah. There's only like a few of them. Yeah, and it doesn't really matter. You start with the set piece first, the roads, and right. then you work on the buildings, and yeah. then you get into the vehicles. There were a couple missing pieces. You'll probably see that as we talk along the set, but those are easy for us to source, and I just wanted to do this video because I felt like this is something I think a lot of you would like. I could be wrong, but for me, I'm like, yo, diorama scene, action scene. I could probably set this up to look like something else going down to take the vehicles away yeah. and you can do your own rundown scene or a post-apocalyptic look to it instead Yeah. if military thing is not your deal. Yeah. But for me, I was like, amazing. This is like so amazing. The thing I always come back to, and you're probably tired of hearing me say it, when you consider the, the medium for construction, which is to say Lego bricks, it fascinates me. Like when he sent me these pictures, I immediately recognized all of these vehicles, even though they're not exact recreations. That always really fascinates me, the ability to create something that still can can tell people right away, can identify stuff. And just so you know, like, yeah, the, not quite to scale the tanks. You're like building miniatures. I Are you sure? Good building though, but it still fits the figures inside. I'm, it's not like the panelist tanks that we're looking at, like our big, we're looking right. for like beef, beefy big tanks. I'm not really sure it's too far out of scale. I don't know. Because I'm not, I'm not into that. I don't know right. about that kind of thing. But to me, it still looks amazing. On because the, the, the Soviet, the KV-2, which is a what, what they called a heavy artillery tank, it wasn't really designed to shoot it at other tanks. It was designed to protect the crew of an artillery piece. It actually, what one of the reasons that, the, okay, that it's on fire here is it literally was kind of the embodiment of the Germans going, oh, I can definitely hit that from here. It was huge. It was, the, the, the turret was much too outsized, much too tall. Nice for the crew, but again, you know, overly visible. So that's one of the things, you know, but it, it's hard to say with this, with absolute scale, but it doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, like I said, it looks nice. That's yeah, it looks nice. Thing. Oh, you might be wondering what's missing. Figures, we have yeah. zero figures that None. come with this set. No figures. And we just pulled a random one out for you later to see in comparison with size, yeah. okay? The other downside to the sets is that, yeah, you can see multiple little tiny plates stacking on top of each other. So it probably won't go with your other sets. It might go with the Moscow defense one. I don't know. Can you combine them all together? 
So the building here on the back is if you probably familiar to all you brick fans out there that it should be the town hall big l's version that has been discontinued right i can say lego anyway lego it's like a lego. destroyed version of it right and i don't know how close it is i actually they, do have the they OG destroyed one. the copyright yeah that too and that's what was left but i do have the original version of that i have a box at home but it, okay for you guys maybe you can compare and see right. what is different but they totally look like it's been blown apart i think it's <laughs> it just looks great because on the outside there, you got like the, the stop lights and the street lamps broken down. The way that they represented a broken street lamp was to put a, a rotary device on it so that you can decide how destroyed it is. Yeah, so you can like, you can probably repair oh, it. Oh look, there's thing. Svetlana. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, I'm, I may be stupid for asking this, but they had stoplights in that time, right? Uh, yeah, e even in the, even in Soviet Union. So you can like change all that direction, and there's a couple like roof pieces that have fallen off. Yeah. The pillars are damaged. There's a couple pieces that I was missing, but guess what? You can't even tell. If I can't tell, yeah. you can't tell. You know, you got a couple of flags dropping yes. down, and I like the I coloration of the, the trees, trees, right? The, the trees. Col the color. We've, yeah. We've seen this design before, but I like the color because it's it's. Slightly, it's not as garish. That's the word I was looking it, for. They're dying. There's yes. no water to them. And I, I, they're the only loose pieces on the set, by the way. Right. They can pop off easy, but I gotta push that one down. They had extra branches, and I just kind of scattered them all over the place. That's oh, a great nice. part. You can use all your spare pieces and just yeah. throw them on the thing. They look fine. Got a broken down post box here, and a broken down bench. A couple of gaps in the streets. Nice on the pavements. Yeah. The, in the the gaps in the pavement. The, for the dirt. I actually really like that. It's just a really interesting detail that they've done. Yeah, know? right. Got more damaged awning pieces up here along the top of the building. Missing pieces there. Sean's nice big fat finger. I like how the door is here. You can still open this side. Yeah. But this one's like intentionally angled. So it looks like it's just been blown open. Right. Looks like they're falling down here. All the little slopes is like kind of scattered about. Yeah. Walls falling this, down. This is a I nice like that detail. Illusion. That's a nice detail. The other one on the how side. To, how to create the pile. Right. Even here, the pillar is like half gone here. Yeah. And along the top, I think this is supposed to be like the year on the original model. I can't remember. And a bell up there. If I flip it to the back though, I can show you guys. Hey. The back side. Oh, it's cut in half. Someone was asking, can you put like a regular modular building on this thing? Yeah, it's raised up. You might be able to like take this you off. You match the height. I have to say the set is super sturdy. I have brought this whole thing down to the office by hand. I'm like nothing fell off on this thing. So that's one of the buildings. The there. exquisite park is nice. I like the water oh, yeah. water okay, effect with the clear. Let's check out the park. So yes, the exquisite park. Welcome to exquisite park. Don't touch the geese. You know what I, I tried to look that up with, with the Google Translate on the phone. All I could find it was USA, but I don't think that quite works. You got this dead looking water fountain. I like that. Yeah. And you know, one of the first few things that you actually build is this little piece right here. It's like, I was like, what the hell is this thing? The last thing you build is this tank. The cave. I realized, oh, it's actually part of the tank. It's right. blown off. Yes. It's like, oh, it's there. But this area is pretty neat. I'm just wondering if you can just find other pieces to restore it if you want to make this place look beautiful. Yeah. Can you do it? I guess you have to use your It could be more it. exquisite, yes. Yeah, right? And then you come to this building over here with the exquisite the detail. Yes. I think this is a Harry Potter building. I could be wrong. It looks like it's from a set. Yeah. It's, it's like the designer was a fan of modulars and like, yeah, oh, I can like mod pre-modify something here. Or maybe this is like a town set. I'm not quite sure, but fun to put together. Yeah. No issues. And I like how like the rooftop looks kind of destroyed on one side. Mm, yes. Actually, the whole half building is kind of gone. I'm swinging this thing back and forth like a maniac. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's a nice Yeah, detail. the windows can open up there. Sean's enjoying sticking his fingers. I'm fingering the, the buildings. You can open the door for us too. Oh, yeah. What, what did the sign say on the front again? It says closed in, in English for some strange reason. It says closed and then what was it? When, when one door closes, another opens. All you have to do is walk in. Oh, the window missing there? That really is missing. So that, they didn't have intentional missing pieces. On the interior of the little house, the exquisite display. Yeah. It's like a fallen over cabinet and a table that's yeah. like on the side. And there is a little bit of an upstairs floor there with an yes. empty treasure chest. Yes. Because someone has been looting. Every angle that I put this thing in, it does look pretty cool, man. No matter where I put it. It's a great like little photography thing if you want to do yeah. a shoot for it, right? 
I like little cracks on the side of the house. Yes, very and then nice. the white window too, like all the, the white walls, yes. the brown windows. Yes, and you got a little trash. Even this the this this sort of yeah. pearlescent effect on the awning. Oh yeah, the the oddly intact awning. The entire building's destroyed, but the awning is flawless. Let's remove roll the tanks backwards. We'll right. take all the vehicles off so you guys can see the street by itself. Because Sean is more impressed about the street than the the vehicles, it seems. No, no, I, I'm impressed by the vehicles. I'm just saying. It, this is one of those things that, it, like, it's not rocket science to come up with, but the idea that you came up with it and then executed it, I just think it works really nicely. Yeah, mm. so if you had, don't have the vehicles on here and you want to carry this thing around, the trees are the only thing that's going to go off. This thing is absolutely solid to build. You are going to have to squeeze down a little bit of plates there. These are using Gobrix. Yes, Gobrix is a brand that's, like, sourcing these kind of bricks. Slightly okay. tighter, but it's okay. okay. But, yeah, it should be, it should be Gobrix. I could be wrong. Someone might call me out on that. But anyway, Sean wants you to see the street because he loves. Yeah. It's almost like a cobbled, messed up, right. damaged street. Yeah, like these holes, which would make sense when you got artillery and, and tanks. Whenever you see tanks in parades and stuff, they, they actually make sure that they're as light as possible because they will literally just destroy asphalt and they put rubber treads on them. So, so in this case, the Germans, of course, wouldn't care. The Russians were interested in defending. The streets did, in fact, get torn up quite a bit. And they do have a gun on one side. That's yeah, I, I didn't really get too Did far into trying it? to identify it. It's it's a rather strange contraption. It's cool that they added that in there, though. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't have to put this there. You can take that off. You can take off the little sandbags. And I think I was missing a couple pieces here, but that was able to substitute with other ones, and it still looks just fine. Oh, okay. So there you go. That's the diorama part. I think yeah. this is absolutely even amazing without yes. any vehicles on there. So we don't like the vehicles, you get this. We like the vehicles, you get this, and then put this aside and build the vehicles. Because now we're going to look at those. Yes. Okay, what tank are we going to look at first? All right, I think we should start with what appears to be a Sturmgeschutz III, which was based on the Panzer III chassis. Those things were generally common. You'll find this a lot in, in most armies, but especially with the Germans. They would kind of do the upper half to purpose. In this case... The Sturmgeschutz is what they would call an assault gun. Now, the original first designs of them, they had much shorter barrels because they were designed as howitzers. And this, actually, it's oddly, it's a theme with, again, with all of these vehicles today. I don't know exactly why. But the idea of an assault gun was a, a tank-like object that could accompany the infantry and engage with things like, uh, for example, concrete fortifications. And it could help destroy those because those require a different kind of gun and ammunition than a tank, which you need armor piercing, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the first ones had very short ones. So if you look up S, S, capital S, small T, capital G3 in Roman numerals, the, some of them you'll see had very short barrels. Those were howitzers. This one has been uh, modified to have the 75 millimeter uh, gun, which was very effective uh, as an anti-tank weapon. It could still serve the other purpose, but this was essentially used uh, more to go after other tanks. It was very useful in defense precisely because it has such a low profile, especially compared to the KV-2. Uh, but in a defensive posture, this thing was very effective. As I say, nice level of detail. The, uh, uh. the wheels all look very close to real life. Uh, the design itself is. I like the way they've added these details of, of the things. They call it greebling, right? All the little stuff that's going on around it. You have some like tire rubber tires on the top. The extra, the extras. Extras. The, 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 okay. Yeah. The Hammer, shovel, and axe, you know, for a small little bonus thing. Yes. I don't even know what's better, like the details on these little guys or the actual diorama itself. And even it's the hatches. It's all exquisite. You know, yeah, right. It's all exquisite. The hatches open up here. Mm -hmm. So you actually can put a figure there. So Sean, oh, yeah. you have a figure. I do. I do have a figure. This is not from this set. This is from another set. Right. Here, I'm going gonna, gonna to divest him. We have him. actually filmed and reviewed together, but I never put that video review out. Nine. We don't, do we want to explain why? I mean, we don't could. need to, but anyway. It's, Maybe it, I should do a membership. It start doing features a, membership a thing, you know? failed Austrian painter with a goofy mustache. Anyway. Just to show so, you. So yeah, that's what it and, looks and like this actually, it's it's interesting because this this headgear you kind of that's it, especially early in the war, tank commanders would often wear this. Oh okay. Yes. There you go. That's what it looks like with the figure on top. 
And this part can actually come off. It's not supposed right. to. But again, like, and yes. Down here. And remind again, the, the figures are not included in the set. This is strictly for oh, scale. Oops. Take them off. But we Franz, don't, we don't what need are you him. doing? I'm going to try to see if this, this part can come off. There you go. So, you know. So, yes, there's a, it's a Ooh, rather a sparse room. interior, yeah. but. You it know. opens up. Yeah. It has a little antenna sticking out the back. Yes. Like facing down. Exactly. Even its <laughs> ass, I like the, the, the look of that on the back. Yes. You know, for something so small, they didn't have to put that much work into it. But right, yeah, but they pretty did. Pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah. The treads are a bit thin, but again, yeah, that's overall, like the typical treads that they use. Yeah. I think one side was like this side, a little bit longer. I could, I could probably take a couple more off, oh, okay. make it tighter on there. Yeah. Um, but there you go. You can see, like, yeah, it's pretty solid, man. Yes. Like, that was a lot of fun to put together. Like, oh, tough as a tank. Yeah. What's next? This. Is the Sonderkraft Fahrzeug 251. Thundercats? Or, or oh. yeah, ah, SDKFZ. This was obviously the German half track. This is when you watch old American war movies and they just repaint American half tracks. They're supposed, they're trying to convince you that they are these, in fact. You do actually see a short version of this in, I believe it's Saving Private Ryan. There was a shorter version. This is actually variant nine. So if you look up SDKFZ 251 slash nine, you'll see this. It's been fitted again with exactly the kind of gun that was originally on the Stug 3. Again, the idea being you would encounter a house or a pillbox or some other fortification of a non-tank nature, and you could therefore shoot at it. The German half-track originally was designed uh, to carry 10 Panzer Grenadiers in the back, deliver them close to the battlefield, and they could exit the vehicle through the back. Right, so it would carry 10 fully equipped soldiers or half of the pool boys employed at Ernst Rome's house, which in fact did not have a pool, but never mind. So this thing, again, remarkable level of detail, uh, remarkably evocative, one of my favorite words when I talk about these things, precisely because you can look at it and know exactly what it is. Right? And and again, I, I'll leave this to you, but the, the small details are yeah, really the, fantastic. A lot of details, again, two stickers, one on this side. And one on the other. One on the other? Yes. And then the hatch or the door on the back actually does function. It opens yes. up. It's a little bit tight, but that's like, oh, that was actually pretty cool. Yes. So, you know, they really did put something into this. Yes. And I was just telling Sean, I pray, I hope there's not a stolen design. Yes. Sean was just playing with this hatch here. Yeah. And it, 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 it you can stick the figure there. And, and there's, yes, there's, there's a, a steering, steering wheel inside. Yes. That's it, though. Little that's ball. okay. It doesn't matter. And it's got a shovel and a, what's, a stick. A stick. Your ass no, it's a stick. So I'm like, get out! Get out! But as I was saying, like, you know, Sean, the detail on this is pretty good. And there are a lot of original designers coming out from mainland. And we are actually working with one who does a lot of mock designs from military. And he's really proud of it. So I, Sean picked out a bunch of vehicles. So hopefully in the future, yes, we can do those. Review that for you. So Sean, let's put a figure inside the sucker. All right. See what it looks like. Still without a... Okay, there's the figure which, standing which there. Which is not necessarily unrealistic. Uh, the, 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 this vehicle did actually have an open top, which was very useful for, you could stay inside and throw grenades out. The problem, of course, was that other people could stay outside and throw grenades in, but yeah, what are you gonna do? You can actually sit him inside. Yeah. There, you can see his face. Sit down, yes. There's a hole. And, and then what, he can go in and out from the back? I don't think he's, I don't think he's gonna fit. Well, he, I mean, he could dive through or something. It's, it's going to be hard Go to walk inside. him out. Yes. Oh, I got fit in there. Ah, oh, I got fit. Ah. Needs more lube. What is this thing up here? What? Uh, that is probably the rolled up uh, weather cover. Like, wow. you know, if, if they knew it was going to rain and they weren't going to be shot at, you could cover it up. I like how they design the hood. It doesn't open up or anything. It's yeah. Kind of like a little bit. A little, but little bit. Tiny little bit. bit. But overall, I think, oh, I was impressed with this. I'm like, yeah. So good job. Yeah. Whoever designed this one. Yes. This was actually the most heavily produced tracked vehicle. They made more of these than any other tracked vehicle uh, during the war. The second was the Stug 3. K. KV. The last one. KV2. Here we go. All right. This is the Soviet, let's call it, instead of Russian. The Soviet KV-2 heavy artillery tank. Uh, KV stands for Clement... What was his name again? Clement Voroshilov. He was a marshal in the Soviet Union. His first name was sometimes familiarized as Klim. He was a marshal in the Soviet Union, was very active during what they called the Great Purge. The KV-2 was actually, here's an interesting, weird con concurrence. It was developed prior to, and at the beginning of the Winter War with Finland. And again, goes back to what I've been saying all day about 
They needed something that could bring artillery fire, sort of direct fire to bear on fortifications because the Finns had lots of concrete pillboxes and they were Finnish and that they were, hence it was a difficult war, which the Russians lost. Um, so the KV-2 was, was designed for that purpose. However, Voroshilov himself was a commander during the Winter War, didn't do a very good job, and in fact was blamed uh, to some extent for the entire failure of the Winter War loss, um, and so was sent away. And then of course when the Germans invaded again, he was called back up and was then made responsible for his failure to stop the encirclement of Leningrad and so was sent away again. So it's kind of odd that somebody with this record ends up having a tank named after them, except that the tank never really was very good. Okay, and they ended up using, after the T-34, when they went to heavy tanks, that's why they're the JS, the Joseph Stalin 1, 2, 3. So yes, the KV-2 was named after, as someone said to me, like, welcome to Losergrad Population Klim. And that was me, and I wrote it. It's a terrible joke. I apologize. But anyway, didn't we review a KV two? No. No, we. I believe we we reviewed a, a JS two. I can't remember anymore. I, I it forget. Sounds familiar. Right. But this this is one of those things where it like on paper it probably sounds like an interesting prospect, and and the the Russians often did that. They would go from the drawing board to production. They kind of would cut out this the the prototype testing phase. For one, like it was so heavy that it could never really move very quickly. It was also, the turret was so heavy, you could only rotate it when, when it was on level ground. Like if, it, if you were on an incline or an angle, you, if you tried to rotate the turret, the engines couldn't do it. Not a very good design, except in certain circumstances. By the end of the war, as long as it could sort of stay behind enemy lines and just keep lobbing shells westward, that would have been okay. But even you can tell because in this diorama, it's already been sort of, I would say, I guess destroyed because we've got flames coming out of what would be the turret. So let's just say it was destroyed. This graffiti on both sides was common for the Russians. It's strong. It's apparently an inside joke about Eva Braun's body odor. What are you gonna do? Those are the only two stickers on this tank. Yeah, which that's it's unfortunate. The tone is a little bit off there. Yeah, it's a nice color. I mean, um, and it's a fairly accurate representation, I guess, but. As far as build goes for this tank, yeah. it's, it was amazing. Like no issues, except when you're putting the edges on, you can't push down too hard. It might flop off. Uh -huh. They do that with every tank that we've been building. Yeah. As Sean mentioned with the fire and the flames going off, that's amazing that Very they added that onto there. It's like a little subtle detail, but so yeah. good. And I was missing a small piece in here. I actually have the round piece. But there's one like clip that I didn't have. But that's a very minor yeah. issue thing. It, it will just look yeah. just yeah. like that on that this side. This one, the tracks do actually no. Even on this one, they're a bit thin, but they're They're're wider. Bigger, yeah. These, these ones are like the, the what tread we on the real one to. should be slightly wider. But again, who cares? You, you look at it. You recognize. Oh, it's a KV two. There you go. You know the turret can swivel. You saw me swiveling it yes. earlier, and can move up and down. And there's a hatch up here. Yeah, it can, it can where's swivel. Our, where's our guy? Level ground. Just oh. throw him in here like he's gonna be blown up. Don't shoot, I got really drunk and I stole this from the Russians. Now I'm ah, back here. My ass is on fire. There's a hatch back here too. I'm yes. Like, oh, look, they included like, it's a little thing like that. I was like, oh, those are so, you can so cool. can sneak man. up behind Fritz and goose him. <laughs> this is Kamal. There's nothing inside, it's just flat like that. But if you guys wanna see the detail there. Yeah. I like this part, they added tracks. Like, I don't know if yes. that's just like decoration. No, 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 they, they quite often would do that because if you had a, a track, if, if it broke or twisted, you could just replace that link in it. Plus by leaving the, the tr uh, track, the excess track on the outside of the tank, it sort of would work as slightly additional armor. Oh, but you can see I'm just like holding it, moving it around. Yeah. That can kind of pop open there. And they, remember my question about the- Yeah, let's see, you know, I mentioned that earlier, right? Yes. It looks like this piece was being blown off here. Yes. Let's see if we can just fix it back up. It looks like it can partially be done. It might not be all the way though. Remember where those flames go? Oh, I think you have to change the color on here. Let me take this yeah, off. that's the one piece I was saying. That yeah, seems... that's all right. Aha, we've repaired it. It has been fixed. Not bad though. No. Oh. The cannon part looks a little bit small. That... No, no, no. That, again, because like I said, these were uh, what we would call howitzers. Okay. The, these things were not necessarily designed. The reason tanks generally have those long, uh, it's for increased accuracy and uh, pressure so that you get higher muzzle velocity so uh -huh. that it's more accurate and hits harder. With a howitzer type thing, artillery, it doesn't really matter. Just send it west, send it west. Wow, there you go. Yeah. 
Looks pretty cool like that too. Alrighty, so Sean has left the building. Actually, she has been gone for a long time. I just finished editing this video. I have to do the last thing, right? So I'm gonna do dimensions for you on the set and then I'm gonna drop this and Sean's like, you drop it without me, man. I ain't picking up the pieces for you. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Anyway, the set is so big. I had to go really wide and like kind of duck down. So break out your 32 by 32 plates. You're going to need three of them. This is actually pretty long. The length of the actual diorama set itself. I'll put this here and I kind of guessed it. It's pretty close. If I line up to here and there, that is around 81 studs by length. Yo, that's long. By width, you're looking about 52 studs. You know, so you're gonna have to like get multiple plates if you wanna build this diorama, not on this part, but on these. I think it's doable. I don't know why I had to make it so thick, but you know, this is probably just a set piece. Now take out your one by four bricks and let's check the height. Oh, that looks kind of crazy on camera. It's like, I should cut my head in half like this. Anyway, break out your one by four bricks, stack them up nice and high. Here, I'll use the space plate. I'm gonna stack it on there. And we're, oh, it's like super close. It's like right around there. Okay. So you're looking at about 42 bricks in height. And don't forget, there's a little bit of a gap. Well, it's like one brick gap. So, you know, if you want to put it on this plate, it's probably going to drop down by a brick or two. You probably don't have room for this. But look cool if you're a shop owner. This will look amazing in there. So now we're onto the vehicles. A lot of you guys asked me before to please do it like a top down view. It helps you. I hope it does. Let me know if you like the style or not. Anyway, we're going to work on this one. What is this tank called, man? I can't even say it. Stream a good street. I don't know. Anyway, if I rotate it there, that is around 23 studs by length. And by width, you're looking at about 10 studs. Break out your one by four bricks and I'll stack it up somewhere around here. That is around seven bricks in height. Ooh, maybe a little bit more with the gun right there. But there you go. So for this half-tracked vehicle, I didn't even know that was a name, but that's cool. The more you know, it's around 18 studs by length. And this one is actually around eight studs. So it's like a champion, speed champion styled size car. I guess. Once again, break out your one by four bricks, stack it here. This is a little bit lower, that is six bricks in height. You do have the antenna, so you're gonna probably double it if you wanna include that, or just, you know, take the antenna off and, and there, lay it on the side right there, be fine. So the KV2, the biggest one, of course, is around 24 studs by length. I can rotate it for you and show you two different angles. There you go, give you a better idea. By, 12 studs width. Yeah, more or less, I count that. I want to count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, it's close enough. It's right around there. This one will be the tallest one. So break out your one by four bricks. Here's my one by four bricks. I'll stack it right here near the flame. It's kind of close to there. It's like 12 bricks in height. 11 if we take the flame piece off. It's oh, it's almost there. But anyway, you get an idea. You know, the, the vehicles are actually pretty small. So you'll have plenty of room for those. And great, you get three of them. And now it is that time to drop it. If you weren't offended by the video so far, then you're not gonna be offended by this. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I'll drop the set first, and then we'll drop the vehicles. I'm actually pretty happy to drop this one. I'm kind of curious to know what is going to happen. But I'm not gonna drop this off a building, all right? I'm just gonna lift it up and drop it right now.
Wow, I'm impressed. Nothing even shifted off this except for maybe one branch. That's pretty freaking solid, man. Don't have to worry about that. And I can see the tree is kind of loosened up. I mentioned that, just gotta push it down. So that stays in there. This one, intact. This one just looks like the back piece came off. And the turret, where'd it go? It's somewhere here, it rolled off somewhere. I'll find it, it's just a little gun piece there. Oh, it's right underneath there. Impressive, man. And this one, just again, the turret piece popped off. It's very easy to put back on. And yo, I'm happy. Woohoo! So there it is, the Barbarossa project. Personally, I think it was really fun. I had like almost zero issues putting it together. It's just only whether or not it's a whole idea of war torn thing going on. Right. You know, yeah. it, it touchy for some of you out there. Yes. For me, I'm just like diorama, beautiful building. It looks like destruction going on. And Sean, what do you, do you think? Well, I mean, like I said, it, it's interesting to me. Ideally, if anything, if somebody builds this, they're going to want to learn more about all, you know, the entire situation and, and, and the stuff involved and things of that nature. Or if nothing else, like you said, it's just it's it's a fun opportunity to build things. And that for me personally, I would hope people can learn from it. But again, yes, a very nice set, really interesting. Like you, we talked about with the flames, how they they managed to create something sort of unique that isn't necessarily anatomically correct, but it still gets the idea across very well and in a very interesting way. So I guess I got to work on the next one. OK. And then we'll get more for you guys. Yeah. So don't forget to like comment subscribe please thank you sean so much for You're coming welcome. down thank again you. i enjoy doing this fine I right? always have fun now we're going to play with us off camera and yes. see who wins the battle <laughs> so until next time you guys break us out yeah doctor's orders man yeah no milk but that's what yeah sure. like, like i was saying but i just Starbucks coffee is nice, but it's not $38 worth of night. Like, that's true. The ghost of my grandmother, Luke. $5 for a cup of coffee. What the hell's the matter with you? I can't help it. Convenience, man. Convenience. I guess. Sorry. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> that's my it, it makes sense for this kind of thing. Are you having fun poking in those holes? Uh, yes, actually it's very fun. It shouldn't be, but it's very fun. All right, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, uh, hey, tremors 5. Now oh, we need a tremor set. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Fred Ward, rest in peace. <laughs>